Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna go through how to create a very quick tileable texture from any sort of uh, texture that you find that you need to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and file, open. I'm just gonna go to my textures. You should be able to download this. And I got the basic rock. And you got two in here to try. The granite's really easy. Um, I've not tried the white concrete, so I'll just open that. So what we're going to do, we're going to just make a really quick tileable texture. And this is really simple to do. This works with stuff that's kind of very generic, um, sort of random, like this, where it's not got loads of detail or something that needs to be super accurate. Um, I will do another tutorial on how to do other tileable textures because this works. This method works really well, but sometimes it doesn't work that well. <laughs> so if you're doing like fabric and it needs to be aligned perfectly, um, you might have to do it a bit more manual, but anyway. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go image, canvas size, change this to pixels, and I'm just gonna match the height, the width, so it's square, 18, 16. That's obviously gonna crop it, but I'm not that bothered. So now we've got a square tile. So I'm just gonna duplicate my background, and what I'm gonna do, the simplest way to do this is go up to filter, other, and offset. And what you, you can sort of see it here, it's offset our image and tiled it across so we can actually see where the seams are. So if you look, so if I just click okay, and I've got done minus 200 and 200. And I just remember that so when I need to put it back, I can do plus 200 and plus 200, it's just simple. So let's select OK. And what you can see here is our seams, which we need to remove. So we only need to remove the seams that we see. We don't want to touch any of the boundary because that's actually already tileable because that's, that's this part here. So we don't need to touch the edges. So when you're doing this, make sure that you don't change the edges because that's already done. So there are multiple ways you can sort of do this. Um, for something like this, personally, the patch tool is probably the best. Um, you can use the clone tool, but sometimes you can tell when people have used clone tools. And if you haven't used the patch tool, it's really simple. Just click and drag your area you want to change. Click and drag it to another area. And it does a pretty good job in sort of blending it over. And we can do that for all the sort of edges. And all of this is just going to select the patch tool. I'm just going to drag it over. And just sort of roughly get rid of these seams. Because I'm not using the clone tool, I'm actually just replacing it with actual. Although the clone tool does do that, it's... um. I find this method much cleaner. Though you do get some weird, strange stuff if you uh, drag it into an area which is a little bit darker, but it blends it really well. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the seams. Obviously you can use the clone tool, it's no problem. But as you can see, pretty much done. We can take some Thing is with this also, we've got some pretty significant things here as well. So I think like if you tiled this over, so if we zoom out, the best way to see what your sort of reoccurring things are, if you just zoom out, they stand out a lot. So we can sort of see these dark patches are gonna be noticeable, noticeable when they sort of get duplicated. So, um. I will actually, uh, no, we'll, we'll just do this bit as well. I will just do a comparison, but I'm just gonna actually remove those really obvious dark bits. Because this is the sort of stuff, something that's more bespoke, you'd probably want to uh, sort of do that in a layer when you're doing a shader. So you want to have, want to have more control. So I'm just going over some, and 
we've got some more repeating patterns. It's fine to have some repeating patterns because then you can just use masks over the top to break it out. But if we can reduce it as much as we can, that's, uh, it's always good. So, so now when we zoom out, we can see we've got much less sort of obvious dark patches. Quite a dark patch up here. We zoom out and it's looking fairly level. Obviously, you only want to do this to a certain amount that you're happy with. Obviously, we're going to still get some repeating patterns. So, depending on how close you get, you might want to pick some of these parts out and break it down a bit. So now we've got pretty, pretty nice texture. That's pretty much done. So, all we need to do now is go to our filter, other offset because we already had minus 200 so let's put this back to 200 and now that will put it back to where it was so that's it um we'll just take this into i don't know well i'll just take it into Maya and we can show it on a tiled texture cool so i've got Maya open so i'm just gonna Create a plane, and you can do this in Photoshop if you want, but um, for most of these sort of applications, we're just using it in 3D software, so you don't have to use Maya. It's just easier for me to show you in something like this, because it's just what we're going to use. So we created our tileable texture. I'm just going to assign a new material. Just going to put a Lambert on it, I'm just, just so I can show you it tiling faster. I'm just going to bring my image in, and I've got my white concrete tile. That's loaded on. If you don't see that, you need to turn your hardware texturing off. You might just see that. So, turn hardware texturing on. And you can see we've got our tile on, and that's just one by one. So when we look in our UVs, we can see that that's one by one. But we want to tile it. Let's say we've set it up in our mix shader, and we've this is our, our base level. We want to Go to our textures. We can place 2D texture and let's uh well, let's try four by four. And yeah, it, you can sort of see the dark patches. But in reality, when you've got that under a mix sort of shader, it's uh, done a pretty decent job. And we can remove this if you want, but it gets you can be going backwards and forwards. Um but you'd probably cover that up with masks and noise maps and stuff like that to cover it over but um yeah it's worked uh pretty well there's no the thing is what we want to do is there's no seams so if we just look around we can sort of see there's no seams at all and it's worked really well and it's really fast so um yeah that's just a really quick way to do um tileable textures um it works for stuff like this um not always for like fabric and stuff, but I'm going to do another one afterwards to show you how to do it more manual, um, which is still a useful way to know, but it can also work here, but it's nice to do it the manual way as well because you can get much cleaner textures. Cool. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.